everyone. My name is Gary Wills. I'm here to present uh, a bonus uh, video in my series of videos uh, about the Battle of Ville Muriel in support of my new book, uh, Wellington at Bay. And uh, in this video, I thought uh, rather than just packing the armies uh, of toy soldiers away, I would uh, provide you with some closer photographs of the forces that you've seen in the other videos. So uh, it'll just be a quick whiz round each of the brigades in turn. Before we start, I just want to stress these are 15 millimeter figures. Uh, most of, of them are from uh, uh, Old Glory and from Timecast. Uh, there's a few, the Hazars are, uh, uh, the French Hazars are actually from minifigs and the uh, Brunswick uh, Light Infantry are from campaign games miniatures. Uh, I've been painting for probably 40 years now. Um, I've got a bit more patience uh, for it these days and a bit more time. Uh, hopefully it shows in my work. Although uh, I paint merely to put stuff on the table rather than uh, uh, rather than claim any uh, um, expert uh, status or showcase status or museum status or whatever uh, you like to call it. So uh, with that as a, a disclaimer, let's proceed. OK, so a quick reminder of the uh, Order of battle before we start, so to orientate yourself. Uh, we're going to show you the French first, and uh, basically it's in uh, three parts. There's the 5th Division of the Army of Portugal uh, under Macoon. He has uh, two brigades, one led by uh, Darnold, which comprised the 15th and the 66th line. Uh, and then the second brigade by Montfort of the 82nd and 86th line, each of those regiments in two battalions. Uh, they had a company of foot artillery um, and uh, the division was supported, uh, at least in one of the scenarios, by uh, de Fosse's uh, light cavalry brigade of uh, the 3rd Hussars, we've already mentioned, the 26th, 20, uh, 22nd Chasseurs, 26th Chasseurs and a little detachment of the 28th Chasseurs. Uh, all, all of the above were supported by a reserve horse artillery company and uh, uh, they had another five guns. Okay, so we'll start with an overview of uh, the uh, uh, first brigade of the 5th Division, Darnold's Brigade. And here you can see them deployed in battalion columns uh, with uh, converged uh, battalions of uh, Voltigeurs and Grenadiers uh, deployed out front. Focusing specifically on the, uh, the skirmish elements, uh, for the black powder scenarios that I talk about in the other videos, I organised the uh, um, con uh, converged battalions of Grenadiers and Voltigeurs into uh, three groups, one for each of the battalions of the 15th and one for both battalions of the 66th. And here is my representation of uh, General Brigade uh, Darnold. He's a bit camera shy and has held up his sword so that uh, we can't see his face. Um, but uh, as I say, he's uh, uh, on a nice black horse, which is uh, obviously difficult to paint, but I've done the best I could. And uh, this uh, is the first uh, battalion of the 15th in here carrying their eagle. Um, don't usually do this, but I decided to put a mounted uh, um, chef de battalion on, on the, uh, on, on the uh, battalions in, in this case. And uh, you can see him there. And uh, there are 16 figures in, uh, in these uh, uh, battalions of the 15th, so they were large units uh, in this game. And here you can see the 2nd Battalion of the 15th Linea, and uh, they proudly demonstrate one of the outcomes of my research for the book. You know, they're carrying a, uh, a white unmarked fanion uh, representing their 2nd Battalion status, according to the 18. 11 regulations. Um, 
Shari uh, originally uh, suggested that these weren't official, officially made for the unit regiments in Spain, uh, but he allowed that they could have been made locally because they are, after all, just a, a, a sheet of cloth in, in uh, a plain colour with no markings. And the research I've done uh, uh, suggests that, that these were available, and so I've used them at least in some of the, uh, the battalions. And this uh, photograph uh, focuses on the two battalions of the 66th linear, the 4th and the 6th. And uh, you can see that the 4th are carrying proudly the eagle of the 66th. Um, Oman uh, was uh, quite uh, reckoned that uh, the, the 66th and other uh, regiments did not carry eagles. Uh, but he omitted to understand, or he didn't understand rather, that the 4th Battalion of the 66th was the senior battalion uh, in the regiment at this time because the first three battalions had been lost in the West Indies in 1810. And uh, you can also see uh, on, the, uh, uh, on the 6th of the 66th, although it was better on the other photograph, that they're carrying the yellow fanion, unmarked fanion, uh, which represents their status as a 6th Battalion. This photo uh, picks out uh, Colonel Jean-Pierre Béchard, uh, who has no role in the black powder scenarios, uh, but he left us a, um, an excellent account of Willem Uriel and the, uh, the retreat from Burgos, etc., uh, which he wrote uh, contemporaneously, soon after the events when he was in Salamanca. He, um, he was the colonel of the 66th uh, Linea uh, at Villa Muriel. Um, based on his performance at Villa Muriel, he was promoted to general de la brigade and died uh, leading a charge in 1814. Uh, I used the figure uh, when I played this game with uh, General Dalme as an ADC. The other officer I'm highlighting here is uh, amongst the skirmish uh, units, uh, Chef de Battalion Michel Isambard. Uh, was uh, a prominent leader of the French uh, skirmish line, particularly at the Ford at Calabazanos. And uh, I used him in Black Powder as a sub-commander um, because he was separated uh, quite a long way from the rest of Darnold's brigade for most of the battle. And you can see him here proudly, uh, blissfully unaware that he is about to die. Moving on now to uh, uh, Montfort's brigade, the second brigade of the division. This is again an overview showing the four battalions with their converged skirmishers uh, from the Voltigeurs and Grenadiers uh, deployed out front. And this is another shot showing uh, the deployment of the skirmishers more clearly and the four battalions in uh, um, column uh, position behind them. And this photograph focuses on the 82nd linea, showing the 4th and 5th battalions. Again, the 4th 82nd was the most senior battalion in the regiment. The first three battalions have been lost in uh, the West Indies, and so they are carrying the eagle of the regiment, while the 5th battalion uh, in this case is carrying the green fanion, unmarked fanion, uh, as uh, decreed in the 1811 regulations. And this is the final infantry arrangement, the uh, 86th Linear with its 1st and 2nd Battalions. The 1st Battalion carrying uh, the Eagle of the Regiment. And just to cover all bases, I decided not to give the 2nd uh, Battalion a Fanion in this instance. And here is a close-up of uh, my representation of uh, General Bidet uh, Jacques uh, Montfort, who is a little uh, less camera shy than... Uh, his uh, partner, and uh, hopefully that gives you a good impression of him. Not sure uh, showing 15 millimeter figures bigger than life size really works, but there you go. Moving on now to uh, De Fosse's brigade of uh, light cavalry. This brigade is actually uh, Curto's brigade. De Foss was the colonel of the uh, second, 22nd uh, Chasseurs à Cheval and took command of the brigade based on seniority. The senior regiment was actually the 3rd Azars uh, on the right here, 
So there were two com uh, two squadrons of uh, Third Hussars, two of the uh, 22nd uh, Chasseurs à Cheval, and two of the 26th uh, uh, Chasseurs à Cheval on the right as we look at it. And here uh, the uh, a close up of the Third Hussars. Um, these are obviously minifigs, so the very distinctive minifig style, uh, very good to paint. Um, and they show my rendition of the silver grey um, uh, colouring of the of the uniforms uh, of this regiment. And here's a close up of the uh, 22nd Chasseurs à Cheval. Uh, in this case, these are old glory figures. Uh, very nice variation in animation on the figures, and they uh, work quite well. Uh, the uh, um, so the way I've based them up is one base per squadron, as you can see. I've uh, included the elite uh, company here with the first squadron, uh, as you can see at the top of the photograph. And uh, finally, here are the uh, 26th Chasseurs à Cheval uh, in two squadrons with the again the elite company at the top of the of the photograph. Uh, in the second uh, company, if you look really closely, you'll probably pick out. Uh, one figure of the 28th uh, Chasseurs de Cheval making up the numbers. And here's my representation of De Foss, the brigade commander, uh, dressed in, as a colonel of the 22nd uh, Chasseurs de Cheval, giving him the uh, uniform of the elite company officer, uh, which may or may be correct. Uh, but again, uh, not sure about blowing up these 15 mil figures to greater than life size, but there you go. And here's a, company, a couple of uh, photographs of the artillery for the uh, uh, division. And here is shown the, both the foot artillery uh, from the infantry uh, uh, division plus the horse artillery company from the army reserve. In the designing the scenario, I toyed with how to represent the artillery at the battle. And uh, initially, I started out with uh, each model representing uh, three guns. So that there were effectively uh, two models for each of the companies of artillery. And uh, I decided, having play tested a few times, it was a bit too strong and uh, wrought, uh, wreaked too much havoc with Barnes's counterattack uh, to be. Uh, a fair representation. So in the end, I uh, I'd reduced it down to um, two uh, a, a company, a, sorry, a model for each uh, company plus a small uh, model, which is denoted by only one crew figure here, uh, with reduced shooting st uh, statistics. Uh, so it effectively, uh, four guns per model plus two for the uh, the one in the middle. And here's a, a final shot of the artillery deployed as they were on the day in a, a, a mini battery uh, uh, taken on all comers. And here's a close up of uh, my representation of uh, uh, Chef de Battalion Charles Blansat, um, who uh, command, he was actually the, the 5th Division's artillery commander. So a representative in the game. Uh, both uh, for black powder as a brigade commander uh, and uh, also uh, in the general Dalmay refight I, uh, I, I I used him as a, another brigade commander and here we have McCune's uh, headquarters staff and starting with uh, uh, McCune himself general of the division uh, he, uh, like Donald's, uh, obviously a bit camera shy, not wanting to look at the camera. And uh, he uh, was obviously a man of controversial reputation uh, following Salamanca. But nonetheless, when Suham needed a man to pursue Wellington from uh, Burgos down to the Duro, it was McCune that he chose. And he was supported by his chief of staff. Uh, chef de battalion uh, Girard, and uh, again he doesn't have a, a role to play in the black powder scenarios, but again he gave us uh, a, left us a, uh, an interesting account uh, of uh, 
both Salamanca and uh, Villa Muriel and other actions. Uh, it is clear from these accounts that he, uh, he was a bit full of himself, uh, so I decided to mount him on the grey horse and uh, he was obviously not camera shy. Again, he didn't have any role in the black powder um, uh, game, uh, but served as an ADC in the General Darmé uh, 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 game that I fought. And here's uh, Chef de Battalion uh, Bofa Dolpaul, who uh, was actually Chief of Staff of the, uh, uh, to the Chief Engineer of the Army of Portugal. And uh, I decided I needed to include him with an engineer figure. Uh, and because they, uh, the bridge and its destruction and repair uh, was a key part of the day. So uh, he's there again, no role in the game, uh, I thought Black Powder, but uh, it was nice to have him on the table. And for completeness, I've already also included an ADC to McCune, uh, shown by this figure, who again in Black Powder's not so important, but uh, was again useful with uh, um, General Darmé. So moving on to the Allies, um, here we have the order of battle. So the Allies were comprised the 5th Anglo-Portuguese Division, just to be confusing, um, and that comprised the 1st uh, uh, Brigade led by Barnes with the 3rd 1st, 1st 9th and the 38th foot. Uh, the light companies and some Brunswick Earls Light Infantry. Uh, Pringle led the 2nd Brigade of the 4th foot, the 2nd 30th and the 2nd 40, 44th, again with Brunswick Light Infantry as well as the light companies. Uh, they were supported by the 3rd Portuguese Brigade, a spry in charge, with the 8th Castadores, who played a prominent role in the, in the uh, battle, and the 3rd and 15th line, who less so. Um, Lawson uh, was the uh, artillery commander for the brigade with his uh, uh, company from the, or his brigade from the 8th Battalion Royal Artillery. They were supported by uh, a brigade or a section, uh, as the Spanish called it at the time, under uh, Linen, uh, comprised the 1st Asturias and the 2nd Voluntarios. Donatarios de la Coruña uh, in, uh, in support. So we'll go through those uh, in, uh, like we did with the French. So starting out with uh, Barnes's brigade, you can see here the four battalions uh, uh, deployed, um, and uh, you can also see the uh, small size of some of the battalions due to the weakness of the, the, of the regimental strengths. So here in this picture, uh, slightly different angle, you can see the uh, battalions deployed as they would have been uh, on the day if they were deployed in line, with the first, uh, the th the third battalion, the first foot at the top of the uh, picture, and at the bottom of the picture, the first battalion, ninth foot, and in the middle, the two battalions of the 38th foot. And here's a close up of the third first foot. They uh, obviously missed the morning session because they were at Palencia uh, covering the unsuccessful demolition of the bridges uh, there. And uh, so they only feature really in the counter attack at the end of the day. You can see here that again, because these battalions are only 10 figures strong, I use a 33 to 1 uh, um, figure to man ratio. Uh, so consequently, I only ever show one flag uh, with my British battalions rather than the conventional two. So next to the third first of the 38, uh, 38th foot first battalion, and here you can see them again, uh, uh, 10 figures with uh, their, uh, their single flag showing the yellow facings. And this is the much weaker second battalion of the 38th foot, only six figures strong. And what I did was uh, is given them the other flag uh, so that uh, uh, when I combine the two battalions to make a stronger regiment, I've got both flags, should the need arise. And uh, finally for this brigade, you can see the first ninth foot and uh, close to the camera is their uh, flag. As you can see, I tend to hand paint all my flags uh, on um, uh, 
in situ, having uh, made them out of uh, PVA soaked tissue paper and uh, got them in position. So uh, not masterpieces, but you know from uh, from a good distance away from the table, they look effective enough. And you, as you can see here, you can clearly identify it as the flag of the uh, first ninth with Britannia on it. And here's a close up of the light companies of the brigade. Uh, these formed in black powder, uh, a small unit uh, of two bases, and uh, there were two figures from the uh, Brunswick Girls Light Infantry, the second company in this case. It's worth saying that the uh, Brunswickers with the 5th Division were not riflemen, they, they were uh, normal companies uh, from the battalion, so they wore black. The uh, rifle uh, or sharpshooter company was the third company in the battalion and they were serving with the 4th Division. And here's the uh, uh, brigade commander, Brigadier Edward Barnes, as I represented him. He, he uh, was, uh, he went on to become famous at Waterloo as Adjutant General and uh, was a furious uh, uh, commander of his men and uh, won a great victory at Echelar in 1813, which uh, drew uh, particular applauds from Wellington himself. And uh, it's also worth noting that uh, um, he's shown here in a Brigadier General's uniform, uh, which is not common. Um, Normally, the brigadiers uh, wore the uniform of their regiments, but his regiment, the 46th, wasn't serving in the peninsula, and he was on the staff. And so I made an assumption that he uh, went to the peninsula with one of the shiny new brigadier general uniforms. Now we move on to uh, Pringle's brigade, the second brigade in the division, and you can see them here lined up. With the uh, on the on the left as we look at them, the first and second battalions of the four foot, and uh, on the right the uh, combined battalion of the second thirtieth and the second forty fourth. Um, they served at Villemurel as one battalion because their strengths were so low, and um, they uh, this arrangement was made official and they became a provisional battalion in December eighteen twelve. And this is another shot of the brigade, and you can get a good view of my uh, artwork with the flags uh, in 15 mil scale, and uh, hope you appreciate them. And this is a, a close up of the first, fourth uh, foot with their uh, blue facings and, uh, uh, and their shiny blue flag. And uh, again, these are small battalions, this is only a 10 figure battalion. And here's a photograph of, uh, of the second and fourth foot. Uh, again, I've done the same thing as I referred to with the 38th foot. So these have the alternative flag uh, so that I can deploy them together as one battalion uh, as the need arises in other games. Uh, from this shot, they all look like uh, grenadiers, but I can assure you that uh, their pom-poms are all uh, white over red. And uh, this is the close-up of the 2nd 30th and the 2nd 44th for two very small uh, battalions and consequently they do have two flags, one for each battalion and uh, you can see them here, where they both have yellow facings uh, so uh, they go well together um, as a single battalion. And here's a close-up of their light companies, uh, it's a smaller unit, a tiny unit uh, in black powder and again, they've got a representative of the 10th company of the Brunswick Girls Light Infantry. And their commander was Major General William Henry Pringle, who's shown here, uh, at least in my representation. And he commanded uh, the, the division at the beginning of the day uh, and in the middle of the day uh, when Oswald was sent away to cover the loss of Palenthia. So we now come on to the 3rd Brigade in the uh, division, uh, which was uh, comprised of the 3rd uh, Portuguese uh, Brigade. And uh, you can see them here with the 3rd and 15th line, each of two battalions at the back, 
and the eighth Casadore is uh, at the front. And here's another shot, uh, and you can see that the Casadores here uh, are organized in two parts with a close order section or wing and uh, deployed wing at the front. And here you can see a close up of uh, the third line infantry regiment, uh, and uh, they're in two battalions, one for, on each base. And uh, I've deployed them. As I've recently found out, they should be deployed. So the the flags sitting in the gap between the two battalions. And uh, again, uh, I only use one one uh, flag per regiment, mainly because of the uh, 33 to one figure scale. So I want as many guys with muskets as I can muster. And here are the uh, the 15th uh, line. And uh, again, these figures are old glory. I was in two minds when I painted these up. These are actually the old glory figures showing the Barantina um, uh, Shaco, and uh, the the evidence is is that they likely had already changed to the uh, um, the stovepipe Shaco by the time that the Muriel was fought. So this is a little ahistorical, if you like, um, for the time. Uh, but uh, nonetheless, I wanted to show that uniform, so I used those figures. And here's a close-up of the Casadores, number eight. Uh, these uh, did sterling work on the day, and you can see them here in the two wings: the uh, the right wing at the front and the left wing at the and the rear. Uh, they were that's how um, uh, Hill deployed them uh, on the day, and I chose to represent them as two separate units in black powder and uh, that enabled uh, uh, the tactics of the day to be shown uh, more clearly. Uh, on the uh, on the left of the picture you can see the Altiradores uh, uh, company with their, their rifles, although there's so few of them, uh, it didn't make a lot of difference to the black powder recreation. In the center here, I've highlighted uh, a figure representing Major W. St. Ledger Hill, who was a bit of a hero of the day. His uh, battalion lost half their numbers by the time the French cavalry had finished with them, and he was wounded, captured, and escaped. Uh, in Black Powder, I've used him as a sub commander because he was a long way from Pringle, uh, who uh, detached him from Spry's brigade early in the morning. So it worked better for him to be a sub commander, able to issue orders for movement and rallying um, uh, during the game. And here's a close up of my representation of Major General William Frederick Spry, who was a very experienced soldier. He'd been at the uh, Siege of Seringa Patem in uh, 1799 in India and uh, uh, so knew his way around the battlefield. Uh, on this day, he kept his head down. And uh, finally, for the uh, uh, the uh, British uh, Anglo-Portuguese, here's Lawson's Artillery Brigade of the Royal Artillery. Again, similar to the French, I've represented them by um, a four-gun model and a two-gun model. And uh, this uh, unit was famous for containing some of the most uh, experienced people. Uh, and uh, people who gained a lot of class on their uh, general service medals. And here's a, a better shot, and uh, you can see here the uh, the two gun battalion on the at the top of the picture is crewed by a representation of uh, said uh, Major Lawson himself. And here we have uh, the Spanish uh, Linians. Uh, uh, brigade uh, comprised uh, of some very inexperienced, uh, recently raised or relatively recently raised troops. And here's another shot of uh, the brigade uh, showing the uh, um, the second volunteer de, de, de la Corona at the top and the first Asturias at the bottom. And here we have the uh, close up of the first Asturias. These are all Essex figures. Uh, I decided these were the best representations for the new uniforms uh, provided by the British with the stovepipe Shakos. Uh, these these uniforms arrived in huge numbers in 1811, 
and uh, my assumption is it was as the regiments were raised uh, it was these new uniforms that, that they were put in and the first Asturias were uh, were said to have uh, sky blue facings which is what I've shown them with here and here are the uh, second voluntarios de, de la Corona and uh, they're shown with uh, the more common red uh, facings uh, on their uniforms again the British supplied uh, versions I mentioned earlier flags was a bit difficult I've uh, chosen for this uh, battalion the uh, the newer hybrid uh, version um, with the cross and the royal arms in the centre which was uh, becoming popular if not official while the first Asturias uh, flag was uh, a, um, uh, a more uh, uh, the more, more regulation flag. Uh, I didn't hand paint these flags. Uh, I have to say the uh, these are made from uh, uh, prints of uh, stuff I found online. And each of the battalions uh, had some casadores uh, or light infantry, and I've shown them here. Uh, they uh, they were definitely present and used uh, at Villa Muriel. So it's uh, important to represent them. And behind them, you can see my representation of Linian, uh, who was a brigadier uh, and had had a reasonably long career going back to 1793 and uh, had gradually worked his way up the ranks. But this was his, I think, his first time of taking his brigade into the field as a brigade. Um, he had uh, taken part uh, with the first Asturias in the in the last attack on uh, on the castle at Burgos before the siege was uh, terminated. And this is uh, Alava, the famous Alava of uh, uh, Trafalgar and Waterloo fame. Uh, and he uh, came to prominence in this battle as he uh, helped Linian rally the uh, Spanish infantry when they hesitated as they were attacked, outflanked by the uh, swarms of French skirmishers from the uh, 15th Linear and he got wounded uh, for his pains uh, in the groin uh, which led to many Spanish jokes. So I, I've mentioned this throughout but uh, just in summary most of the figures are Old Glory 15 mil uh, by, from Timecast uh, in terms of the French infantry and most of the, the British infantry. The exceptions are the uh, uh, Brunswick Light Infantry from Camp Game Games Miniatures, Third Osars are from uh, Minifix and the Spanish are uh, from Essex. The, um, uh, the cavalry, the, the other French cavalry were also Old Glory 15 mil. Uh, I paint with uh, mainly with humbral enamels. I've been doing it for 40 years, don't see any reason to stop. I find them more durable uh, than, uh, than the acrylics uh, during the painting process as much as anything else. And so I've persisted with them. I do, however, use uh, some acrylic washes uh, for the flesh and uh, acrylic matte varnish. Uh, um, for uh, just finishing them off, giving them a bit of protection and also uh, putting right some of the glossiness of some of the, uh, the, the humble enamels. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, if you have, please look out for my book, Wellington at Bay, which describes the Battle of Villa Muriel in a lot of detail and uh, <coughs> is worth reading just for the, the detail of, of the, the armies and how they fought and what their experience was, etc., etc. It has received uh, now eight uh, um, five-star reviews on uh, Amazon, uh, and you can buy it at Helion's website under the uh, From Reason to Revolution series. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the series of videos on William Muriel. Uh, this is my last one. My uh, next videos uh, will be on. Uh, Venta del Poza, the cavalry battle that took place just before Villa Muriel, uh, which is set out on my war games table in front of me right now. And I hope to play that with uh, two or three different rule sets just to see how they, they uh, represent the game. 
Uh, I also plan to do a video on my first book, Wellington's First Battle, uh, which is a game on Boxtel in 1794, uh, which I took to salute uh, a few years ago, and uh, which also won a Best in Prize uh, uh, show at uh, another show, a uh, more regional show. The, uh, there is also going to be a series of videos on Lynn Sells, a book I've already written, ready for publication. Um, uh, that's uh, Lynn Sells in 1793, and uh, that uh, those will be interesting videos because the, uh, there's a lot of new research that's come from writing that book. And finally, look out for my forthcoming work, which is a chapter in uh, Hellion's uh, uh, forthcoming book Glory is Fleeting and that chapter looks at McCune's division again but this time uh, the role they played in Salamanca and uh, hopefully that contains some new research, new scholarship uh, which will add to the story of Salamanca itself. Thanks very much, please uh, if you've enjoyed this please subscribe and, and like as they always say. All the best, bye bye.